Hello, good evening to you. Shalom to all of you. Peace be unto you. you know, that's what Jesus spoke uh, to the disciples when, we, when they were troubled and they were hiding inside the room. Jesus appears after his resurrection and what does he say? Peace be unto you. So his presence in our life is peace. Did you get that? Jesus said, in me you will find peace. The peace, the word peace is shalom. That means not only having uh, peace inside of you, the word shalom is, it has a broad meaning. It's even prosperity, material, physical, soul. In all areas you find prosperity, that is peace, shalom. So in him you will find peace. That's why in midst of all the challenges that you have, still you can have calmness within you. Uh, you don't panic like others, but you have more problem than others, but you are calm. That is because you have a very strong relationship with Jesus. So please don't look for peace in yoga. Please don't look for peace in meditation centers. Please don't look for peace uh, in, you know, so many other uh, things because you will never find peace, permanent peace, until you have Christ in you and Christ with you. Christ in you and Christ with you. What is that, Pastor? Christ in you is the indwelling presence. Christ with you is the manifest presence. Now today I have determined to finish the study. <laughs> so I don't want to get anywhere outside of that. So peace is your portion when you walk with Christ. Walk with Jesus. Okay, There will be trouble in the world. You cannot control the inflation of the country. But you can control yourself with the peace that you have. Okay. Now. We have stepped into the last uh, part of this study. What we are dealing is how we can restore our soul. We have come a long way, eight episodes, eight parts. You are joining us for the first time. Welcome to the Father's House Bible study. Please do visit our website, our YouTube channel. Links will come down. Go and watch parts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then watch eight because if not, you're just wasting your time because you will know, not know the head or the tail. You will not benefit out of this. But anyway, if you want to watch, I pray that the Spirit will reveal something to you that will cause you to have a transformation. Now, I have been showing you steps in the last two weeks how to restore your soul. Okay? Number one, we said, I said, uh, to, uh, I want to thank the Holy Spirit. It's only Him who's enabling me to teach. All glory, honor, and praise. I, I try my, my best not to use the word I. It is not I. It is Him. Okay? So, number one thing is, do you want to get healed? That's, we dealt with it. Because some people don't want to get healed. They, they kind of reminisce these moments of being in sorrow and grief and depression and they want to be in that status. So you have to make a decision saying I want to get healed and then I told you time will heal. There are wounds in your soul time cannot heal. There are wounds that are caused by yourself to the soul. What are those wounds? Just an example. Someone can keep condemning themselves or having a guilty feeling of not looking after their parents and parents have passed away. You have all the privileges and facilities at your home to keep your mom and look after her, but you kept her in a home and she died alone. And now that guilt feeling is killing you and, and you're condemned. Now you want to get out of that wound in your soul. Number one thing, repent, ask forgiveness from God and forgive yourself. Okay, so we looked at uh, wounds created by others, wounds that are owned by you. For both, you need to forgive. Forgiveness is a key factor in restoration of your soul. So you forgive yourself, 
You forgive others, you receive forgiveness from God. 3D, I told you. Can you remember? So forgiveness is key. Repentance is key for restoration of soul. Then I told you to take a piece of paper and write down whatever traumatic incidents that you have gone through in your life from small days. Sit with the Holy Spirit and ask Him to reveal and, and then you write them down and then you go through the list and release yourself by forgiving yourself, forgiving others, receiving forgiveness from God, repenting, all of that you do with that list and one by one you strike it off and once you're done with it you burn it and say my past is gone you're dealt with your past and after doing that also the enemy will remind you certain things you will have to say look here i have dealt with it you cannot remind me get out of my life and after some time that nagging nagging and and you know uh, tormenting thoughts will depart and you constantly keep refuting it and refusing it and saying I will not own this it is dealt at the cross God has forgiven me I have forgiven myself I have forgiven so and so don't remind me and the enemy will leave okay now then I showed you how the Lord wants to restore your soul okay God's will when it comes to healing of your soul and body, know God's will. He wants to heal you. If not, he would have not died on the cross. Is it the will of God for me to get healed, Pastor? What a stupid question. It is the will of God for you to get healed. That's why he paid the price on the cross. Okay. So you always align your will with the will of God. What is the will of God to find out? Read the word. Understand the word. You will know the will of God. And when you know the will of God, align your will with God's will. That is very important. No matter how great is the will of God for you, if you don't align your will with God's will, you will not see the manifestation of God's will. Okay? So aligning your will with God's will is very important. So psalm 23 1 to 3 we saw that god wants you to be restored in your soul and then i showed you how he restores your soul through psalm 23 1 to 3 he lead you to green pastures as a shepherd that is the word of god and then to still waters which is the holy spirit because holy spirit is compared to water in the scripture and word of god is is, is what you feed on that's where the shepherd leads. And then I showed you, he leads you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When, how does he restore? When you build your relationship with the Holy Spirit, build your relationship with the Word of God, he will lead you into something that you have to do, which is right standing before God. And when you obey, restoration takes place. For some, someone, someone watching, me right now he might tell you to go and call your dad and and say i'm sorry you haven't spoken to him for 10 years then the spirit of the lord will say call your father or go to him and ask forgiveness and get his blessing you might struggle but that is righteousness before god and when you do that restoration happens in your soul just for example I, I told you the story of a precious daughter, how God asked her to close down a business and to go and serve voluntarily at a children's home and she got restored. So that is leading in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's how restoration happened, precious people of God. Okay. Then we looked at meditation of the word of God. We saw Romans chapter 12 verse 2 when you trans how does transformation happen in your life the word transformation let's read jackie uh, romans 12 verse 2 now have you seen a caterpillar becoming a butterfly that's called transformation 
Okay. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So somebody looking at the caterpillar who has no idea of the, you know, uh, transformation of uh, a caterpillar becoming butterfly, if they have no idea, if you show them and say this caterpillar is this butterfly, is going to become like this butterfly, they will say no way, look how ugly is the caterpillar. Can this creature ever become like a butterfly? They will never believe. Some people may look at your life and think like that. Look at her. Can she be transformed into such and such a person? That's what people looked at me and thought. That's how my friends, now, now my friends can't understand who I am today because they know my past. I have worked with them and they know what a rotten guy I was. So now they look at my life and they are scratching their head, pulling their ass and say, how come this fellow become like this? A caterpillar has become a butterfly. Why? Mind. Renewing your mind according to the will of God. This is the will of God. Written and given by the Holy Spirit. So you must believe this and accept this is the will of God. And when you renew your mind with this will of God, your life transform. Your soul transform. And now your life may look like a caterpillar and you might even look at your life and say, Oh, what a disgusting life. What an ugly life that I am living. Can I ever become like a butterfly? Yes, it depends on you, how you renew your mind. So Paul emphatically writes and says, now come on, look, don't, don't think like the world. Renew your mind to become transformed, to become the life that God has created you to become. Okay, so that we looked at. So renewing your mind is very important to restore your soul. So that's where we're going to, going to take off from today and I'm, I want to finish the study today. So let's dive in. Now I'm going to show you some additional ways to refresh your soul. Okay, I'm going to show you some additional ways to refresh your soul. I, I thank the Holy Spirit for leading me to do this Bible study. Uh, oh my God, the amount of um, people coming and telling me, Pastor, this message has really touched my life, really transformed my life. All these years I didn't know that it was because of my soul, my life was being like this. Mm. So, all praise and glory and honor to the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? Now, some additional ways to refresh your soul. I'm going to add to what, what, whatever I have already said. Quiet time. Sitting quietly in a place is very important to refresh your soul. You know, we are living in a very fast spaced life. Everyone is on a rat race. So much of things to do. So much of responsibility. So much of, uh, you know, errands to attend to. You name it, family, friends, work, church, ministry, kids. Oh my goodness, the amount of things that you have to do with kids. With all of this, if you want to refresh your soul, you must have quiet time. Okay. That's one of the areas that the Spirit will always lead you. In bits of all of this hustle and bustle and busy life, you must find quiet time. The best time is get up around 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the morning and just sit quietly in His presence. Okay? And make reflection. Try to connect with your soul and have your Bible beside you and a journal on the other side with a pen. Sit quietly. When the whole world is sleeping, when your family is sleeping, Just sit in God's presence and listen what he has to say to you. Very important. That quiet time is very, very important. That is refreshing your soul. 
and pray and invite the Holy Spirit uh, and open your soul and share your heart honestly with Him. The early morning hours when everything is quiet, Bible on one side, your notebook on one side, pen, you want a coffee, get a coffee done, you know, and invite the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, here is my soul. I open my soul. Minister to me. Very important. This is a refreshing moment for your soul. Okay. And ask questions. Ask questions uh, with the Holy Spirit to help you. Now, precious people of God, I keep on repeating this. Holy Spirit, Jesus sent to help you. Okay. Jesus said, I'm sending you a helper. He has come down to help you. Get help from him. Don't ignore him. So sit with the Holy Spirit and ask him questions. Questions like, where am I emotionally, Holy Spirit? What are the areas you want me to grow, Holy Spirit? What doors I need to close? What doors that I need to open? Why do I overreact or get so upset easily? You know, lately I was getting a uh, little agitated and angry with my family, uh, you know, which was not in me. Suddenly this started coming. Um, and I had to sit and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, why am I doing this? Why am I behaving like this? Then he showed me, you know, it's the stress of the ministry has, you know, overwhelmed you, which you are trying to release it on your family. Relax, son. Ministry belongs to me, not to you. I own this ministry. You are my steward, my son. So relax. You know, the Holy Spirit was ministering to me in that quiet moments, which kind of completely, you know, brought perspective into my life, alignment. And when I received it and I, when, I, when I corrected my approach, my behavior changed. You get what I'm saying? So this is very, very important. Why do I overreact or get upset so easily? If you have any angry outburst, ask him to reveal the root of your anger. Sometimes you might get angry for no reasons and you might wonder, why am I get, getting angry? But there is a root cause. Ask him, why do I avoid conflicts, difficult conversations? What is making me anxious and why? Why do I struggle to receive or give love? You know, just some random questions I have right now. I've written it down. Now, you need to build that relationship with the Holy Spirit. The best person who's going to help you restore your soul, I, I told you, is the Holy Spirit. Word, Holy Spirit, and God's love. These are the three medications for your soul. Word, Holy Spirit, love of God. This is the prescription. If you want to heal this soul, word, Holy Spirit, love of God. Love of God is like ointment on your wound. Your soul. So the more you ask questions from Holy Spirit, the more you acknowledge Him, He's going to manifest. Him. If you don't acknowledge Him, if you don't consult Him, now we call we, I'm going to see a consultant. Okay. Why are you going why are you going to meet a consultant? To get his opinion, to get his expertise in that particular area, his advice, his counsel. So in the same way, you must consult the Holy Spirit. Very rarely children of God do that because why the world has taught us touch, feel, see, and then relate. 
you have to touch it, you have to feel, you have to see to relate. But that does, that, that does not apply in the spiritual realm. So that's why we are struggling to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Why we can't touch him, we can't feel him, we can't see him. So we are struggling to build a relationship. With him. Go beyond the physical realm to the realm of faith and operate with the Holy Spirit. And he is the best counselor. He is the best helper I have ever come across. You know, I can share with you testimonies after testimonies of how he has helped me in difficult situations. Not only spiritual, uh, even when I was working in the bank. His counsels. Wow, awesome. Mind-boggling. So whatever the Holy Spirit speaks to you, jot down in the journal. Okay? And then execute them into action. That's very important. Now, last Sunday I spoke about obedience. How important obedience is. Now, that is very key when it comes to restoration of soul. When the Holy Spirit speaks and instructs you to do something, do it. So that you don't grieving. Disobedience always grieves the Holy Spirit. Okay? And always mm, receive the love of God. Say, pour out your love into my heart. The love of God is a healing balm to your soul. Okay. The wounds in your soul are healed by the love of God. So you need to receive the love of God. Romans uh, chapter 5 verse 5 says, I believe it's Romans chapter 5 verse 5. Um, yeah, it says, Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So God's love is poured into our heart, poured into our heart, uh, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So the love of God is an amazing healing balm. And that can be received through the Holy Spirit. So this is why the presence of the Holy Spirit of God is very, very important. Okay. So, God is a redeemer. He desires to restore our soul. So, you and I can walk in victory. So, God is a redeemer. He will redeem your soul. He will restore your soul so that we can walk in victory. Your walk of victory depends on your soul. A healthy, wholesome soul causes you to walk in victory. So that's why God wants to restore your soul. Nurture your soul by meditating on God's word and, and experience his healing. Okay. Um, so precious people of God. Mm, all of this what I listed out, okay, uh, of um, the things to do to restore your soul. If you find it difficult to do it by yourself, then you need to consult a good, spirit-filled, spirit-led Christian counselor. Okay, not this secular counselors. I'm not talking about secular counselors. I'm talking about a born-again, spirit-filled, spirit-led, sound in the word, good counselor. You need to, if you're struggling to do all the steps what I gave you alone, you can't do it by yourself, then you don't have the discipline. Some are indisciplined. Consistency is key. This is one thing that I keep telling Simfi. Simfi, you must have consistency. 
not doing just one day and then forgetting about next day and then after about two days later you start all again no consistency i i don't know whether sri lankans lack consistency consistency is key to see results now if you go to gym your your uh, vision is to have six packs okay now the vision is good and you have set the goals you know when you have a vision you have to set goals it's the goals that takes you towards the vision so now you set the goals i want to have six packs by end of december 2025 now you set goal saying every day I'm going to work out in the gym for one hour. Now vision is there, goals are set. You go on Monday to gym, then the whole week you don't go and then the next Monday you go. Consistency is key for results. So even the restoration of soul, consistency is key. If you're not consistent, in what you're called to do, how can you see results? So work out on your consistency. Consistency. Okay. So if you can't do it, if you're not, if you're an indisciplined person, and you can't do it alone, then you need to consult a, 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 a good counselor, a Christian counselor, spirit led, spirit filled, born again, sound in the word. You need to consult him. Okay. So, um, in addition to this, okay, in addition to all the steps, what I showed you, in addition to that, some may need deliverance. Okay. What did I say? Some may need deliverance. What is that, Pastor? There are certain people because of all what they went through and the wounds in their soul and pain in their soul, they open doors for demonic possession and demonic oppression. Okay. Deep sorrow, deep grief, all of this can be an open door for demonic oppression or even possession. You're not born again. So these kind of people doing those steps what I showed them is, is, is uh, insufficient. They need to be delivered also. Okay. They need to be delivered and then when they follow those steps, complete wholesome restoration happens in their soul so uh, if you if you feel that i have opened doors for demonic oppression or demonic possession then you need deliverance and restoration deliverance and then restoration okay because there are occasions where soul wounds can lead to open doors for demonic oppression so they need to be delivered and then counsel um, now for example you know when I came to ministry in, in 2010 um, I was working in the bank and you know I have shared this testimony so so many times um, I even though I worked in the bank I never saved money so when I came to ministry I didn't have any savings uh, and Thanu was doing a job and she was getting a small salary. So we went through financially a huge crisis. Um, in the addition to that, we thought, you know, the house that we were staying, the landlord promised us as much as you want, you can stay, but look after the house. After I left the job and came to full-time ministry within a few weeks, he asked the house back. I'm going to sell it as soon as the buyer comes here to leave. Now, I was praying, 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 you know, all kinds of prayer. God was absolutely silent. And I went into this deep sorrow and grief and I was not possessed. Let me be very clear. 
not possess, but I came through an oppression, a spirit of heaviness got on me. You know, the Bible talks about mm, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So, uh, you know, coming to full-time ministry at that time, no, I wasn't doing any ministry. Uh, even though I came, I wasn't given anything at that time. Uh, only just, you know, I used to pray with few widows before the healing meeting. That's all the ministry I did. So other times I was just praying, praying, praying and, you know, and being in God's presence and this heaviness got on me, spirit of heaviness got on me. And it was not possession, it was an oppression in your mind. You feel like not doing anything. It's like somebody sitting on you, a heavy load on you. So when Tani used to go to work, I used to be just flat on the ground crying, you know, morning till evening, just like this. And I used to sleep and then get up and then sit and with spirit of heaviness. Then one day when I was on the ground, I hear a voice. Ask, what are you doing on the ground? I said, what do you want me to do? This was the voice of the Holy Spirit. He said, get up and praise. It was the most difficult thing to do for me. Because I haven't touched the Gita for months. But I obeyed. That's what I call the leading into the paths of righteousness for his name. At that time, what was right in the eyes of God is get up and worship. You can't do, but do it. You know, I took the Gita, tuned it, and first song, Second song, third song, suddenly an anointing came. That broke loose the oppression. Okay. Thereafter, I was dancing and praising God and worshipping God for hours and hours. And that day and night, I walked into the kitchen. And the Lord's voice that I didn't hear about the house matter for many months, that night he spoke to me and said, I will give you own house before the end of that end of that year and today we live in that apartment God was faithful to his word so what made me not hear his voice was the spirit of heaviness how did I open door for the spirit of heaviness deep sorrow and grief how did I break it through praise so precious people of God um, when we go through difficult times in life, uh, those incidents or those situations can become an open door for demonic activities in our life. So we need to be very careful. And if you are uh, under such demonic oppression, you need deliverance and then restoration. Okay. So I'm just showing a few other things what you can do to restore your soul. In addition to that, you know, uh, some other uh, non-spiritual activities that you can add into your life to refresh your soul. Okay. Things like daily going for a walk, um that's very important fall into a schedule of you know daily going for a walk you don't need to spend money to go for a walk find a you know place where is uh, you know there are walking paths there's there are beach beaches go for a walk that is refreshing to your soul then do some exercise uh, have some sort of uh, entertainment in your life. Okay. Mm, and when, when I say entertainment, watch some good movies. Good movies. Huh? Um, if the Lord has told you don't watch movies, then please don't listen to me. But if not, watching good movies is nothing wrong. Okay. Um, not being addicted to them. Mm. But having some sort of recreational activity, you know, some people get too obsessed and, you know, overboard with spiritual thing 
and they become depressed. Have you seen people like that? I have come across. I have come to counsel them. Only thing that they do in life is they don't talk to people. They don't watch anything. They are just confined to their room, only reading the Bible and only praying. And they have become depressed now. How can you become depressed in the presence of God only reading the Bible and praying? So, you need to balance precious people of God. You need to balance life. Go for some walking. God is not going to get angry with you. Do exercise. God is not going to get angry with you. If you are watching some good sound you know, uh, movies, there are good Christian movies. I watched yesterday night a, a movie called um, Mind Reader, <laughs> a Christian movie called Mind Reader. It was a good movie. Oh, uh, there are some good Christian movies. Mm, day before yesterday, I watched a, a, a movie about two orphan girls and a dog. Wow, that's a nice movie. I'm talking about movies like that, not shooting and killing and stabbing and, you know, horror movies. No, I'm not talking those movies. For God's sake, don't watch them. But there are some good movies, okay, mm. which can relax your soul. Sometimes your workload is so stressful, office work, 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 children work, children's problem you know, financial problem, all of that, you're praying, reading the Bible, in the midst of that, have some oh. recreational activity. Go for a walk. Go do some stretching exercise. Watch a good movie. Learn to relax your soul. Have a hobby. Have a hobby. Some sort of a hobby. And fellowship with like-minded people. Okay? These are things that can relax your soul. It's very, very important so when your wound when your wounds in your soul is gradually healing your external behavior behavioral patterns will significantly change okay by looking at your outward behavioral changes you know that your wound is getting healed and that will become a sort of upliftment an encouragement a morale boost in you now if a new when you work out in the gym and when you're starting to see results in your physical body of little muscles coming up and you know you feel more encouraged to do it am i right in the same way when you start restoring your soul when you see your behavioral patterns change that is a morale boost that's a, a you know encouragement that will give you more desire to go for it and protect your soul and look after your soul that will give you a desire so having said all of this i want to tell you no one can say that i have fixed my soul forever okay oh pastor i have now did all of these things my soul is fixed forever you can't say that why your soul is always open it's an open book uh, and devil as always has access to your soul. He has access to your soul, but you have all the right to refute and refuse with exercising your will. Why God has kept your soul open? Because he wants you to have your own will. He doesn't want you to become like robots. So no one can ever say, my soul is fixed now forever. I am done. I am done. Every day you have to look after your soul. Now, uh, what is the guarantee that you have that tomorrow no one will hurt you? No guarantee. After restoring your soul, you go to office next day, somebody screams at you, shouts at you and scolds you in filth and falsely accuses you and abuse you. Can you stop that? No. But you can make sure you can protect your soul. So that's what I said. No one can ever say that my soul is fixed forever. You need to guard your soul. 
every day. So therefore, protecting your soul every day is your serious responsibility. It's a serious responsibility. Why? Your spiritual, your physical, your financial prosperity is directly connected to your soul. That's why the devil is after your soul. Why he knows if your soul does not prosper, you will physically not prosper, you will financially not prosper. So only thing the devil needs to do is just make mess up with your soul. So this is why protecting your soul every day is very, very important. So when you get back after the days of activity, okay, now you start the day today and you go throughout this day and throughout this day so many things can adversely affect you, turn against you and hurt your soul. So many things that can happen can shatter your soul, create a trauma in your soul. Okay, uh, You need, before you go to bed, you need to sit alone and fix your soul. You need to do a soul search with the help of the Holy Spirit. Try to do it every day because your soul is important. Don't postpone it. Don't accumulate junk, garbage in your soul. Clear it. That's very important. So every day after you get back, why do you have a wash? None of us go to, after whole day's work, when we come home, we don't go to bed straight away. No. We wash. Why? We have accumulated dirt, dust throughout the day. We remove these clothes and put them to wash. And we have a wash. Why? Because we have to get rid of all the dirt. In the same way, make sure your body is now clean. You have had a wash. Now make sure your soul is clear. Soul is clean so that you, you're, you're maintaining and looking after your soul. If not, the devil can make inroad into your life. Why does the Bible say that before you go to bed, if you have anger with someone, sort it out. The Bible says that. Go with me to... Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. In your anger, do not sin. That means even if you're getting angry, is not sin. But what you do after getting angry is what causes you to sin. Okay. Now, on the road, the treasure guys guy cuts across, you will get angry, but don't put down the shutter and scold him in filth. So getting angry is okay, but what you stole putting down the shutter is what has caused you to sin. So in your anger, do not sin. Okay. Now watch. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Let's keep it there, Jackie and Papa. So the Bible is saying, don't go to bed without sorting your anger issue. So that means for you to get angry, someone has caused you to become angry. Some incident created by someone has caused you to become angry. Now the Bible says, come on, before you go to bed, Sort that anger with that person. Don't go to bed with that anger. Okay, anger is an issue in your soul. Now look at the next verse. And do not give the devil a foot hold. So that means you 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 kind of keep keep things that needs to be sorted in your soul, you don't clear them out, you're giving foothold to the devil. He can operate in your life. 
Are you seeing what I'm saying? Now, John 14, 30, Jesus says, the prince of this earth is coming. Prince, rather, the prince of this world is coming. But he has no authority over me because I do not have anything what belongs to him. Amplified version of God. John. Amplified John 14 30. I want you to see this. 30, Jackie, 3 0. John 14 30. So, whatever belongs to the devil, let it not remain in your soul. Immediately get rid of it. That's what the Bible is saying. Now, look at the words of Jesus. I will not talk with you much more for the prince evil genius ruler talking about the devil of the world is coming and he has no claim on me why he has nothing in common with me there is nothing in me that belongs to him and he has no power over me come on watch this word now why does the bible say sort out the anger before the sun goes down because anger is a fruit of the flesh that belongs to the devil. And when you harbor that in your soul, you have given a foothold to the soul. You have given permission to the devil to operate in your life. Why? You have something that belongs to him. Therefore, he has power over you and he has claim over you. Why? You have something belongs to him. Oh, I feel the anointing right now. I feel strong anointing on my hands. Get rid of anything in your soul that belongs to the devil. This is where the children of God are leaving doors open for the devil to operate in their life. So the Bible says, every day, make sure that your soul is cleared soul is clean that you don't accumulate garbage in your soul every day clear it have you seen this uh, you know waste bin icon in your computer screen if you can just empty it by your click like that you need to empty your soul with anything that belongs to the devil bitterness anger hatred lies what else sorrow grief get rid of this so that your soul is clear every day i try my best to do it if you want a healthy body clear your soul and sometimes it's not sometimes. If you don't look after your body also, you fall sick. Okay. You can clear your soul. and But you put all the junk food into yourself. And your body can fall sick. You have cleared your soul. But all the burgers and sausages and ham and bacon. And these days I don't think bacon is there. I love bacon. Tanu is scolding me these days. For God's sake, don't eat bacon anywhere you go. There's fine flu. <laughs> I even I see bacon, even there's swine flu, I bless it and eat it. <laughs> so what I'm saying is if we put all our junk into our body, then body can fall sick. If you're eating, then exercise. So one area I need to really control and discipline myself with is food, uh, which God has been reprimanding me. So what I'm saying is, Body and soul, we need to look after precious people. Don't let us put garbage into our soul, garbage into our bodies. Okay? Clear your soul every day. Make it a practice. Look after your soul. Be determined to have a healthy soul. That's what I'm saying. Now, when you see Jesus on the cross, they have nailed him, pierced him. They have torn his body into pieces. He's hanging in pain 
on the cross and he's saying father forgive them for they do not know what they do what is jesus is doing he's clearing his soul i don't want anything in my soul i want to make sure my soul is clean father forgive them are you seeing you know bible says be imitators of god look at jesus and imitate him keep your soul very clear precious people of god so when you go to bed without solving anger issue in your soul you're giving opportunity to the devil to build a stronghold in your mind you know when when you are sleeping don't think the spiritual realm is sleeping okay understand that spiritual realm never sleeps the god of israel never sleeps no slumbers angels never sleeps demons never sleep satan never sleep when you are sleeping they are operating and they can deposit things toxic things while you are sleeping in your soul so you have an anger issue with someone in your office and then you have not solved it you're gone to sleep with it while you're sleeping the devil is depositing thoughts and then you get up in the morning with a, a revenge in your soul today morning i'll go and see him fixed in the office i will i will go and you know create something against him so this anger that has not been sorted overnight has turned into revenge now and that revenge and now the devil will work on revenge to make it to to push into action okay so you go and hide the file one of his file and then that person is searching for that file that important file why you want to take revenge and then because of that file that person loses his job okay where did it start an anger issue which you didn't sort it out the devil took advantage you gave a foothold to the devil now he has got transformed that anger into revenge and revenge into action and you have sinned and where it has led to precious people of god protect your soul Okay, so I always say when it comes to sin and your soul, keep very short accounts. What do you mean by short accounts, Pastor? If something happens, solve it then and there. Okay, don't have long pending accounts. Ah, I will do it tomorrow. Next month I will repent. Next month I will deal with it. The devil will build brick upon brick strongholds in your mind, in your soul. So I finish there today, the study. I have taught you comprehensively about the soul. Now, if you have listened to part one to part eight, I, have, I believe that there is, there is no stone moved regarding, uh, you know, uh, soul, teaching on soul. So you must be having a clear idea um, of what is soul, what can create wounds in your soul and then how to restore your soul and etc etc okay so um, may the lord help you to have a healthy soul <clears throat> and i thank the holy spirit of god for helping me to do this study so um I finish Bible study for this year, okay? Unless the Lord, you know, uh, prompts me to do something. But mm, December month, I take time off to pray and prepare myself for the next year, which you also must do, okay? Don't haphazardly walk into 2025. Hoping that things will be done. No. Take time. Seek the face of God, fast and pray, and say, Lord, what is there for me in 2025? Show it to me, God. So that when God shows, that you can position yourself for that. Okay, so December month, I stop all activities of mine, 
and I was seeking the face of the Lord. So, uh, English Bible study, this will be the last study for this year, and then I will see you in 2026, January. Okay, and I hope to finish my Tamil Bible study tomorrow on, on Thursday. Okay, I'm hoping that I can finish it. Uh, if not, there's one more week, then that also will be done for this year. Um, I believe the singular Bible study and the uh, English Friday Bible studies will continue because I think Peter and Pastor Randall wants to do, I believe. I do not know what their plans are. Uh, for me, this is what I, this is my plan. I'm going to take time off in December. Because throughout this year, I have taught you. Uh, not a single Wednesday or not a single Thursday I have missed. Um, that's only by the grace of God. Only by the grace of God. Okay. Um, maybe one or two uh, Wednesday or Thursday I wouldn't have had because of some other program other than that God gave us the grace to do it throughout the year. We need to thank God for that. So it's good to end this study with the soul so that you will invest time with your soul and step into 2025 with a renewed soul, a healthy, wholesome soul. Okay. Um, also, I will encourage you to share the YouTube link or the website link with Tamil speaking people because the study that I'm doing for Tamil speaking people about God's event, God's um, event in, in his calendar for the church, next event, God's next event uh, for the church in his calendar. That's the Bible study that I'm doing. It's a very important study. Every Christian must listen to it. So share that link. You know, I'm not saying that to give view uh, for me to get views or anything. I'm least bothered about how many views and blah, blah, blah. Why am I saying that? It's, it's an important message, a timely message for the Tamil speaking people to know where we are in the calendar of God, in the prophetic calendar of God. And that we need to prepare ourselves, get ready. That's why the, the, the warning message comes. So share that so that many people will benefit. So God bless you. Hope to see you on Sunday. At the Tamil, um, Tamil singular service that happens at Word and Deed, uh, 37th Lane uh, at 7.30. Hope to see you at Tamil singular. I'm preaching there. And also I'm preaching at the English service uh, at 9 a.m. Sri Lanka Foundation Institute, Padanama Mawadha, Kalamu Sabah. So hope to see you all. God bless you. Look after your soul. Prosper in your soul. Prosper in your health. Prosper financially. God bless you. Let's pray and close. Father, we want to say thank you. A big thank you, Lord, for giving the revelational knowledge to teach about the soul. Thank you, Father, for restoring many souls even during this Bible study. Thank you for the testimonies that I have heard. Thank you for restoration of lives. Thank you, Father, for the grace that you have given us to take this word, this Bible studies to many parts of the world to restore lives. This grace is from you. We want to say thank you, Lord. And thank you for all the equipments and all the committed people, Lord, you have given, who have put their hands on the plow and determined to serve your kingdom, God. Bless them, Father. Bless them for their commitment, God. Lord, thank you for all what you have done. I earnestly pray right now if there is anyone, Lord, who needs deliverance and restoration in their soul, I pray right now, let your power come upon them. And if you feel like I need restoration and I need deliverance first, Pastor, I feel that there is demonic oppression in my life. There is demonic affliction in my life. I feel someone in my family 
is demon possessed i want you to just lift your hands and uh, join your faith with me even as i believe and pray i rebuke that demonic oppression right now i rebuke that demonic possession and i cast it out in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i i detach you from this demon i detach you from this oppression i rebuke that spirit to leave you right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth be delivered in Jesus name be set apart in Jesus name I I cut you off asunder from these oppressions and I speak freedom into your life even as you join your faith with me thank you Lord thank you father thank you dear Lord Jesus thank you Holy Spirit of God there's a mother who's watching us right now. You observe there are certain observe certain abnormal behavior um, on your daughter. Your daughter is eight years old. You see some abnormal behaviors which you have never seen in her life before. Precious mother, I want if she is around you, I want you to lay hands. If not, I want you to bring her to church. What the what the behaviors what you see is it's demonic oppression she needs to be delivered she needs to be delivered if she's around and you are a born again mother and you're a god-fearing mother walking with the lord i want you to lay hands but if not you need help bring her to church or take her to a good pastor uh, whom you know who's walking with the holy spirit of god and who's anointed and moving the deliverance ministry father we thank you for the deliverance that is coming to this dear daughter in the name of jesus christ of nazareth thank you lord thank you father thank you thank you lord i pray restoration of souls and restoration of marriages in jesus mighty name thank you lord that your restoration is coming upon marriages because wounds are being healed in the soul in jesus mighty name we give you praise and honor and glory to your god we thank you for this day holy spirit of god help many souls to rise up and overcome their wounds in jesus mighty name we thank you for your death resurrection and your ascension and the dissension of the holy spirit thank you lord Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, who even right now you are in many homes, touching lives and bringing restoration to souls. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed week. Lord Jesus loves you.